Hello everyone, my name is Wendy. In this GIMP beginner tutorial, we will look at how to create a multi-layer effect with GIMP. I'll be using Windows and GIMP 2.10.28, which is the latest version of GIMP at the time this video was created. To create a multi-layer effect, we will create different layers for different color parts of the image. While experimenting with different images and color tones, I found that the images where the models were wearing darker clothing and had highlights or reflections in the hair created a more interesting look. For this design, I created an extra layer and traced around the outline of the t-shirt and filled it in with a black background before desaturating the image. I like the result, so feel free to experiment. If you would like to follow along, I downloaded these images from freepic.com and pixels.com. I'll leave the links in the description below. Before we move on, if you'd like to see more videos like this one, then please subscribe, like, and press the bell button so you don't miss any new videos from this channel. Thank you. We'll use this image for today's tutorial, so let's get started. I'll open the image, and from the pop-up dialog, you can choose if you want to convert to GIMP's RGB color profile or keep the original. I'll choose Convert. I'll go to the Image menu and down to Scale Image. Here you will find the dimensions of the image. I chose a medium to large image, that way you can get more interesting details. I'll just close the dialog. Next come over to the Layers panel and I'll double click on the title and change the name. I'll type in Original. Now we're going to create a copy of this layer, so drop down to the menu below and press the small icon for Create a Duplicate of this layer. Press the small eye-shaped icon to turn off the visibility for the original layer. Make sure the top layer is the active layer, then right-click and from the Flyout menu select Add Alpha Channel. This will allow transparency in the layer. Next we're going to remove the background. There are several methods for removing a background in GIMP. However, for a multi-layer effect, we don't want any feathered areas around the selection. So today we'll use the Paths tool as it's easy to trace around the outline. Also, if we need to make any modifications to any part of the selection, we can always go back in and reopen the path. Come up to the Tools box and select the Paths tool. In the Tool Settings, make sure you're in Design Mode. Left-click once to leave the first node, then carry on clicking Leave in Nodes as you trace around the model. Place the nodes just inside the edge of the model. When needed, place the nodes close together and in other parts, you can space them apart and drag on the handles to create curved areas. If you need to zoom in, press the control key on the keyboard and scroll the middle mouse wheel. And if you need to pan from side to side or up and down, press the middle mouse wheel and drag the mouse at the same time. When you finish tracing around the head and the shoulders, stop at the bottom and start to draw the path around the outside of the image. Come back to the first node that was created. Hold the control key down and left click on that node to close the path. Come over to the settings panel and press selection from path. Then select the move tool to disactivate the paths tool. The selection is represented by a moving dashed line. Everything inside the selection can be manipulated and this is the portion of the image that we will delete. Come over to the paths tab. Double click on the small white image to activate the path. As I mentioned earlier, you can make further adjustments to the positions of the nodes. I'll make a few final tweaks to mine. To do this, I'll left click on the node to select it, then I'll drag it to its new position. When you're happy with the position, go back over to the tool settings and press selection from path. Then select the move tool to disactivate the path tool again. Now we can delete this portion of the image. With the cursor on the canvas, right click and from the flyout menu go to edit, then clear or delete. Come back over to the paths tab and make sure the path is unchecked, then switch back to the layers tab. You'll notice the selection area is still activated, so before we can move on we need to disactivate this. Place the cursor on the canvas, right click again, go to select and press None. Now we can create a copy of this layer and keep it as a backup, just in case we mess up somewhere along the way. We can always come back to this one. So come down to the menu below 
and press Create Duplicate of this layer. Then we'll change the title, so double click on the title and I'll just type in Backup. Then uncheck the small eye shaped icon to turn off the visibility of this layer. Click on the top layer to activate it. Then double click on the title and we'll change the name. I'll type in Desaturated for this layer. Before we move on, let's create a background layer. Come down to the menu below and press the first button which is to create a new layer. In the dialog, don't worry about the fill-in type as we will change the colour in a second. Just press OK. I'll double click on the title and I'll just type in BG for background. The background layer should be below the desaturated layer, so click hold and drag the layer below. Come over to the foreground colour and click in the colour box to open the colour selector. I prepared the colours in advance, so if you'd like to copy the HTML notations, the background colour is F4EEC5. Then go to the colour box, click hold and drag the colour over to the canvas and release the mouse and the colour will be applied to the layer. You can close the foreground colour selector now. Come back over to the layers panel and click on the desaturated layer to activate it. Now come up to the colours menu and go to brightness and contrast. Before we can desaturate the image, I'll adjust the brightness and the contrast, also the levels. Drag the contrast slider to the right. Now you can see the tone effect. There is a dark tone, a light tone and you have your mid tones. Now I'll adjust the brightness. I'll move the slider to a value of 26. Then I'll drag the contrast slider back to about a value of 77. With these values, we're maintaining a lot of the details around the hair, hairline and the face. There's also a lot of fine detail around the mouth and the eyes. I'm happy with this. We can fine tweak these values a little more from Levels. So click on Edit these settings as Levels and the Levels dialog will open. In the Input Levels section, just below the histogram, there are three triangle sliders for adjusting the levels. You can click and drag the tiny triangles to adjust the contrast, middle grey values and colour. The tiny black triangle will adjust the darker tones and shadows. The tiny white triangle will adjust the lighter tones and highlights. And the tiny grey triangle will adjust the mid-tones. This slider will automatically move to the middle of the tone range. You can also change the values by pressing the upward and downward arrows in the text box. I'll set the white triangle to a value of 171 and the black triangle I'll set at a value of 64 and the grey triangle I won't move at all, I'll keep it at a value of 1. I'm happy with the way this is looking now, so I'll come back over to the panel and press OK. Now we can desaturate the image, so come back up to the colour menu and scroll down to desaturate. I'll just leave the default mode which is set at luminance and press OK. Let's go back to the colour menu again and this time we'll go to Posterize. This tool is designed to reduce the number of tones or colours and maintain an excellent likeness to the original image. By default the Posterize levels are set to 3. This means there are three tones in the image, a dark tone, a light tone and a mid tone. Come back over to the dialog. I'm going to boost the Posterize levels to 4 and this will create two mid tones. The image will become lighter and softer and has more details in some areas, then press OK. Now we can start to create different layers for the different colour parts of the image. But first, let's create some duplicates of this layer. From the menu below, press the icon for Create a duplicate of this layer four times to create four layers. Then uncheck the small eye-shaped icon to turn off the visibility of the layers. Just keep the top layer and the background layer visible. Select the top layer and double click on the title. I'll change the name, I'll type in dark. This layer will be for the dark tones. Come up to the toolbox and grab the select by color tool. In the tool settings the threshold was set at 28. Now click on the black part and all the parts of the image with the same tone will be selected. Come over to the foreground color and click on the color box to open the color selector. As I mentioned earlier, I have the colours already prepared, so if you'd like to copy the HTML notations, 
the color is 425454. Then go to the color box, click hold and drag the color over onto the canvas. Release the mouse and the color will be applied to the layer. Next right click on the canvas and in the menu go to select, invert. This will invert the selection area and then hit delete on the keyboard or you can go to edit and select clear. The selected area is still activated so before we can move on we need to disactivate the selection. Right click, go to select, then press none. And this is the first layer. I'm happy with the result. I'm going to use the same technique for each of the other color tones. Press the small eye shaped icon to turn off the visibility of this layer. Then turn on the layer below. And I'll change the name. I'll just type in medium. The select by color tool is still activated. So now come over to the canvas and click on any of the dark gray tones to select them. Now come over to the color selector. The HTML notations for this color is 55897D. Then drag the color over to the canvas and release the mouse. Now let's invert the selection. So right click on the canvas, go to select, invert. Then you can hit delete on the keyboard or go to edit and clear. Then go back to select and press none. And we now have our second layer. So turn off the visibility and select the layer below this. Right click on the title and this time we'll type in light. This will be for the lighter midtones. So back over to the canvas and click on one of the lighter midtones. The HTML notations for this color is ADC4A0. Then drag the color over to the canvas and release the mouse. Then right click, go to select, invert, then delete or edit and clear. Then next go to select and select none. Now turn off the visibility of this layer. Select the next layer below and change the name. I'm going to type in cream. This is going to be the same color as the background color. This is the last layer in the multi-layer effect and it's for the white area. So click on any part of the face. The HTML notations for this color is F4EEC5. Then drag the color over to the canvas and release the mouse. Next, right click, go to select, invert, then we'll go to delete or edit and clear, then select and select none. I'll have to turn off the visibility of the background layer so you can see this layer. You can now turn on the visibility for the other three colors in the background. And here's the end result. If you followed along, you can now export as a JPEG or a PNG file. We'll wrap up here. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Enjoy!